In this video, we're going to be talking about a formula for pi found by François Viette in 1593. And this is actually the first example of an infinite process used to obtain pi in European mathematics. Now Madhava had his arctangent formula and other trig formulas a few hundred years earlier, but this is really the start of a wave of European formulas for pi. So the formula says 2 over pi equals root 2 over 2 times root 2 plus root 2 over 2 times root 2 plus root 2 plus root 2 over 2 and so on. So with each term we have one more nested radical in the numerator. And this is actually a special case of a more general formula for cosine of some angle x over 2 times cosine of x over 4 times cosine of x over 8 and so on. Now it doesn't appear that Vieta actually had this general formula, but one can use essentially the same idea for the specific case to handle the general case. The answer ends up being sine x over x. And to prove this, it's really just half angle formulas over and over and over again. So it's really what the Greeks were doing thousands of years earlier, just in a slightly different form. So to prove this, it really just depends on the formula sine 2 theta equals 2 sine theta cosine theta. And the trick is to instead write it as cosine theta equals sine 2 theta over 2 sine theta. Now if we plug in theta equals x over 2, we get cosine x over 2 equals sine x over 2 sine x over 2. Okay, that doesn't look too special, but when we plug in x over 4, we'll get some of the same terms. We'll get cosine x over 4 equals sine x over 2 over 2 sine x over 4. Now when we multiply these two equations, the sine x over 2's will cancel and we'll get just sine x and sine x over 4. And we keep doing this, and so what we get is cosine x over 2, cosine x over 4. I'll stop at a certain point, say x over 2 to the n. That will equal sine x over 2 sine x over 2 times sine x over 2 over 2 sine x over 4, and so on, up to sine x over 2 to the n minus 1 over 2 sine x over 2 to the n. OK, now when we look at this big product, the sine x over 2's cancel, the sine x over 4's cancel, everything cancels up to sine x over 2 to the n minus 1. So what we really get is the sine x stays, the sine x over 2 to the n is left over, and then we have n2's down here. So to get the infinite product, we now take n to go to infinity. And that will give us, on the one hand, cosine x over 2, cosine x over 4, cosine x over 8, 
and so on. And on the other side, we get the limit as n goes to infinity of sine x over 2 to the n sine x over 2 to the n. Now the limit doesn't affect the sine x at all, so we just have to deal with the denominator. And fortunately, that's pretty easy because we know that sine theta is roughly theta as theta goes to 0. And that's what's happening with this x over 2 to the n. So the bottom limit is really just x because you have 2 to the n times x over 2 to the n or if you really want to do it properly you could use L'Hopital's rule for example okay so that proves this identity now how do we use this to get Vieta's product well it's pretty simple we just let x equal pi over 2 And cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. Cosine of pi over 8, using a half angle formula, is the same thing but with an extra root 2, and so on. And on the other side, we have sine of pi over 2, which is 1, and pi over 2 in the denominator. So that's the reciprocal of pi over 2 which is 2 over pi. We could do the same thing with, for example, pi over 3, of course, which would give root 3 over 2 times root 2 plus root 3 over 2, and so on. So again, every time we add another root 2 plus. Now this is from letting x be pi over 3, so we'll end up with sine pi over 3 over pi over 3. Sine pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. So we get a much nastier formula, which is 3 root 3 over 2 pi. OK, now you might wonder, what if we replace this 3 with something even bigger, like a 5? Well, things go a little wrong there because this is no longer the cosine of anything because we're dealing with things that are bigger than 1. But not all hope is lost because the same kind of trick can work with more general numbers. So. The idea was to use half angle formulas to collapse all the cosines down. If we write cosine theta as e to the i theta plus e to the minus i theta over 2, then the formula we had earlier looks like, remember we had cosine theta over 2 initially? Then we cut the angle in half. And in half again, and in half again, and so on. And then we had, well, sine theta over theta on the other side. Well, now if we make a substitution, say t equals e to the i theta, we end up with t to the 1 half plus t to the minus 1 half over 2 times t to the 1 fourth plus t to the minus 1 fourth over 2 and so on. So each time we're taking a square root. And this is something that we can do for really any t as long as we're a little careful about how we take these roots. So we can do it for real values of t as well. And now, if we want root 5s here, what we need to do is let t to the 1 half plus t to the minus 1 half equal root 5. And that's a quadratic in t to the 1 half in disguise. And you'll find that t 
is the square of the golden ratio, essentially. Now, even though this t value is real, whereas before it was not, this collapsing still occurs. So the key point is that if you take root 2 plus anything plus its inverse, that's the same as taking the square root of that value and its inverse. Because when you square this, you'll get a u and a u inverse. And then the cross term will be 2 times the product, and the product is 1, so that gives you the 2. So we can write this as t to the 1 half plus t to the minus 1 half over 2 times the square root of 2 plus that. times the square root of 2 plus that all over 2, and so on. Now, again, this collapsing happens because if we take n terms of this, we'll have 2 to the n in the denominator. And then we'll have t to the 1 half plus t to the minus 1 half, t to the 1 quarter plus t to the minus 1 quarter, t to the 1 over 2 to the n plus t to the minus 1 over 2 to the n. OK, now we can rewrite each of these factors using a difference of squares. So the first term is t minus t inverse over t to the 1 half minus t to the minus a half. Then the next term is t to the 1 half minus t to the minus 1 half all over t to the 1 quarter minus t to the minus 1 quarter. So this is exactly the same sort of telescoping we had earlier. OK, now almost everything cancels. And we're just left with 1 over 2 to the n times t minus t inverse over t to the 1 over 2 to the n minus t to the minus 1 over 2 to the n. And we let n go to infinity. And while the t minus t inverse stays as it is, now the denominator is a bit trickier, but if you use L'Hopital's rule, for example, um, or write t as e to some power, what you end up with is 2 log t. Because if you write t as e to something, say e to the alpha, then you have e to the alpha over 2 to the n, which is roughly 1 plus alpha over 2 to the n. And then you're subtracting 1 minus alpha over 2 to the n. And then multiplying that all by 2 to the n. So the 1's go away, and you get just 2 alpha, which is your log t. Now if we use this value of t that we had before, which was the square of the golden ratio, on the one hand we get root 5 over 2 times root 2 plus root 5 over 2 times root 2 plus root 2 plus root 5 over 2, and so on. And on the other side, we get this t minus t inverse over twice the log. OK, so this is 3 plus root 5 over 2 minus 3 minus root 5 over 2 all over twice the log of 3 plus root 5 over 2. Now this can be simplified a little bit to root 5 over 2 log 3 plus root 5 over 2. Or if you prefer, since the bit inside the log is the square of the golden ratio, we get a factor of 2 out, and it becomes 4 log of the golden ratio. Okay, so 
this log gave us pi when we plugged in complex numbers because log of e to the i theta is i theta. But when you have a real number, it just spits out an ordinary log. So uh, we'll see this again where logs of complex numbers give you pi's. Uh, 